Thank you so much, Robert and John. I have to say, everyone, was that not an amazing conversation to listen to? Now, clearly, the hardest job comes to follow that, so please indulge me. Uh, but also, I mean, I'm reflecting here, and there's often a saying, like, I wish I was a fly in the room. We are all gnats and flies in this room, and I hope that the message that was just shared by John is carried and echoed even farther than just today. Uh, but more specifically, thank you for telling me about that trailer park, and uh, just know that it just got a little bit bigger, and I, I hope that I can join in the fight too, so thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm, I'm try it again. It's the solstice, maybe, you know, the solar eclipse has gotten us. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Jonathan Hill. I have the distinct pleasure of serving as one of the Emerging Leader Council's co-chairs this year. But even bigger than that, I have the honor of introducing our next speaker. Dion Dowdy Lacey, I had the amazing pleasure of just meeting a few moments ago, is the co-founder and executive director of the nonprofit United Returning Citizens. Based in Youngstown, Ohio, URC provides job search and training, life and financial literacy skills, transitional and stable housing support, primarily for citizens re-entering society from correctional facilities. Under Dion's leadership, URC has done some amazing things, but more specifically, it has expanded its reach, forging new partnerships with government agencies, nonprofit organizations, and businesses alike. Dion will share with us today her story and intersection with not only access to justice, but her personal connection to incarceration and the role that legal aids have played throughout her life. So do me the great honor. Thank Dion for the amazing work that she's done and please put your hands together for the amazing story that she's about to grace on this stage. Thank you so much. Good afternoon. I'm over 50, I have to put these glasses on. Yes. Well, hello everyone. I am Dion Dowdy Lacey, and it's a pleasure here to be, it's a pleasure to be here with you all. I'm here today to talk about the experience of someone who has rebuilt their life after a criminal record. But before I go into what I want to say, I want to share a little bit about me, because I'm much more than what my records may show. I'm a proud resident of Mahoney County in Northern Ohio. I'm a mother of three, and I'm a grandma of five beautiful grandbabies. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a nonprofit leader. I have been executive director for United Returning Citizens for 10 years, with I, which I have co-founded. I'm an advocate for returning citizens. I'm a community leader. I'm a, I have served several proud, I have served proudly several community organization boards, including my local legal aid organization, Community Legal Aid, which I was the president for two years during the COVID-19 pandemic. <laughs> years ago, I would not have imagined what my life would look like now. My husband and I was raising our three children at the time that he was incarcerated. I was a domestic engineer at the time, and I knew that I had to find employment to take care of my kids. Our house was went into foreclosure. I was scared. I never had a job. I didn't know what to do. So I knew of little resources of none. So I needed something to help me get back on my feet. But I knew I needed to help my children to stay in the home that they were familiar in and where they were raised. So a friend came to me. She was like, Dee, you ever heard of legal aid? I'm like, no. She's like, those are lawyers that can help you. I said, lawyers? Like, I don't have any funding right now for lawyers. She was like, it was, you know, it's free. I'm like, well, free is for me. <laughs> so I did the intake. And when I did the intake, my lawyer was Patricia Dugan. And um, Youngstown, we call Miss Patty the housing guru, because she knows everything about housing. She treated me as if I was a paying client. She got my house out of foreclosure. 
interesting, but through the processes, she always kept me update with what was going on. And she would constantly ask me, like, Dion, do you need anything else? Can I help you with anything else? So not only did she help me with my housing, she helped me with my license, she helped me with the inception of United Returning Citizens. <clears throat> and the whole time, I mean, she helped me with, with, let me start all over. She helped me with my license. She helped me with my housing. And she helped me with the nonprofit. Um, she also helps with my entrepreneur support group that I have. We have five women of entrepreneurs and five women of nonprofit. And she comes every week with me and she helps me support that. And also Legal Aid helped me to do a very successful expungement clinic where last year we helped and supported 152 people to get their records expunged. So how important is that? 152 people. 152 people that can navigate through their careers with no barriers. 152 people that have a second chance at life. Uh, 152 people that now have confidence in their self again. I love it. Legal aid became an important part of my life. That is why I agreed to join the board and help in any way that I can. And that is why I agreed to come here today and share this story with you. And it's just befitting because this is April. It is what, second chance month where we give education and awareness of how important it is for second chances. Legal aid is an important resource in our community. And, and they care not only about your situation, they care about you as a human being. To those in the room today that have supported this work financially, I thank you. Those who volunteer with legal aid, you are a community gem. For giving yourself to others so that they can have a better life, now that's servitude. Legal aid staff, you are pillars and advocates for us helping people with barriers, the most underserved communities that cannot afford it. Back home, we call those the one third not heard, the people that are not seen or heard. So community legal, I mean, community legal aid does a great job with that. <laughs> the time and effort and money you all give is greatly appreciated and needed. So be proud of your efforts. I'm here today with executive director of my legal aid, Steve McGarity. Steve, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for the work, the partnership, the experience. I got to come to lunch yesterday and, and see uh, Hillary Clinton. Like, you know, I'm, <laughs> who would know? And also, I'm on the eighth floor with a balcony on there. Great job. <laughs> I also want to say thank you to Maria du Duvouvet. That's your last name, right? <laughs> so Maria is like a she hero champion to me. Like the, every, like the details of everything that she does, she care about people so greatly. So LSC, you definitely have a rock star. <laughs> And while Patty isn't here today, I'm hoping that she's watching, hi Patty, the live stream. I'm so happy that you were my lawyer and advocated at that time. You showed me how to show up for people and care about your job and others. You're truly a friend. And I can't wait for our next sip and chat, so give me a call. I love our sip and chats. And my years with legal aid has not only changed my life for the better, it has made me more of an effective leader and a compassionate person. So sometimes people judge you of what you've done in your past and you always make mistakes and things. And I tell my clients, sometimes you have to go through some things to build your character. Sometimes you have to come the person that you need to be to do the thing that you need to do. And that's what happened to me. So thank you, Legal Aid, for seeing me. <laughs> <laughs>